have an awesome episode for you today. Lynette White is the District and Community Relations Coordinator in Banning Unified School District in California. I met her several years ago when she was at Santa Ana, and I am so impressed. And now after this interview, I'm even more impressed. And you're going to know why by the time you listen to the entire interview. And don't leave early because she drops a major surprise at the end of this episode. I did not, I had no idea Lynette was doing this, but I shouldn't be surprised because she has given so much back to school communicators and to school leaders everywhere. And now she's going to be doing that in an even bigger way. So Lynette uh, started as a part-time person in uh, Santa Ana Unified back in 2009. She has worked in a variety of roles and she is now in her third school district. Um, she's going to share that journey. She's going to talk about her passion and you can hear it in her voice of really wanting to serve and elevate that storytelling that needs to happen in our schools. Um, she has, has had a very successful brand ambassador program where she's really built up this team of storytellers. She's going to share exactly how she did it, how often they met, what did she teach? And she'll share the impact. Uh, don't miss it. This is a great, great episode. And before we get to today's K-12 PR tip, I just want to thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone who has uh, purchased a copy of my new book, Social Media for Schools, Proven Storytelling Strategies and Ideas to Celebrate Your Students and Staff while keeping your sanity. You guys, this book I've been working on for a little over a year, but honestly, when you think about it, I've been writing this book for nine years. I started doing social media for schools back in 2014. This book is a culmination of all of the tips and tricks and strategies that I have shared over the nine years that I've been doing this, but in one handy d and manual. And I just want to give a shout out to all of the folks that have placed bulk order. So yes, we do have a bulk order option. If you order 10 or more books for your school district, school leaders, school um, social media storytellers from each school, uh, you get a savings and you can go to my website to get that. Um, Jeannie from North Carolina, Athena from Gresham Barlow and Oregon, um, John Boyd from Texas ordered a whole host for P Harmony Public Schools. Um, Cindy Rupnow from Monroe in Wisconsin. Jada Tesnier in Spartansburg School District in South Carolina. Kelly Al Allen in Michigan. Kathleen Hawkins in California. Devin Sherrill in Arkansas. Thank you guys so much for your support. You basically ordered this book before you even saw a copy of it. And then you said, hey, I need multiple copies of this so that we can all get on the same page. And I know you're not going to regret it. This book is a great resource. It's going to help build the systems, build the branding, and build the storytelling that you need to really elevate your school's story on social media. So thank you guys so much. Let's get to today's K-12 PR tip. All right, K-12 PR tip today is all about AI and chat GPT or Canva write, okay? You guys, there is a tool out there now that helps write awesome social media content. And it's a great first draft. It's a great option for when you have a little bit of writer's block. And uh, Lynette and I are gonna talk about it a little bit in today's episode. But I just wanna tell you um, what I just used it for this morning. So every two weeks, New Auburn, has a play times, play group slash story time where we invite kids ages two to four into the school to interact with the teacher, have a story, get a lunch, all of this. And every two weeks I'm sharing something out on social media to get folks informed that that's happening. We don't recommend social media always for just those announcements, but this is a really small school and it's one way for us to get the word out. So when you're saying something over and over and over again, it can really get to be to sound the same. And so I wanted to spice it up a little bit. And so what I did is I went to chat.openai.com and I said, write me a Facebook post with this information, but rewritten in a way that incorporates airplanes and taking off puns and things like that. And it took my, um, you know, what I put in 
and it came up with get ready to take off for a fun-filled morning at the new auburn playgroup story time on friday april 28th from 9 to 10 a.m kids ages two to four are invited to come and fly high paint the skies and explore the wonders of school don't worry about packing a lunch we have a we have sack lunches available for all passengers please rsvp to the teacher and her email so we can ensure there's enough fuel for everyone on board we can't wait to take off with you. And then it even included some emojis. You guys, mic drop, that is awesome. I could come up with some of that, but I couldn't come up with all of it. And again, you might have to reword a little bit, but you need to explore this. Why? Because you have a lot to do. And if this can make your posts even more engaging, I think it's something worth checking out. Whether you use chat.openai.com, which is free, or you use Canva, which if you have a Canva Pro account or Canva for Education, there's now Edit or Magic Write, it's called. Go into Create a Document. There's AI right within Canva that will help do similar things. Uh, if you want to know more, we're learning more about AI and how we're incorporating that in um, our own uh, little membership group. But we're also talking about it next week on the podcast as well. So make sure to come back. Okay. Um, let's get to today's awesome podcast interview with Lynette White. Hello, Lynette White. We've got you on the podcast. Welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here. I'm very excited. Yes, I have uh, really enjoyed watching your journey through school communications and you have really been doing some great things in California. So why don't you introduce yourself and then just share a little bit about your role as the district and community community relations coordinator for Banning Unified School District? Yeah, that's a it's a total mouthful of a title, that's for sure. Um, so I'm Lynette White, known online as Lynette White Social. Um, and my journey has been so weird. Um, I've been in education since 2009. I started as a classified employee part-time uh, was a stay-at-home mom and was like, okay, I kind of want to work again, um, but I want to work part-time and, you know, what better schedule than a school district uh, to fit my kid's schedule, right? Um, so I started at, in Santa Ana Unified Century High School. Um, it's funny, it's the first interview that I had uh, coming out of being a stay-at-home mom. It's the first position that I applied for, first one that I interviewed for, and then I got it. Um, and the interesting part of that position uh, or of that uh, acceptance was they had several openings across the district and were like kind of giving me my choice on where I wanted to go. And so I was like, you know what, send me where nobody else wants to go. I want to go to where nobody else wants to go because I feel like that's the community that needs the most help. Um, and little did I know, like I've been reflecting a lot lately, and little did I know that that would lead me to this journey of amazing mentors and to where I am today. So I worked at Century High School for 10 years and uh, was able to promote up to the superintendent's office where I worked under Dr. Stephanie Phillips briefly, um, and I'll forever be grateful for her. Um, and then came Jerry Almendara's. <laughs> who you know very, very well, Andrea. <laughs> um, and Jerry is the ultimate catalyst in where I am today. Um, he just saw something in me that I never saw in myself. Uh, anyone who knows Jerry knows he loves social media. And at the time that he started with our district, um, it was January 2020. And uh, being the brilliant man that he is, he knew that he needed to get out to the community and uh, start building those relationships and really wanted to utilize social media to do it. But we didn't have a PIO. So there was no uh, communications person in place. We did have a team, but we didn't have that lead position. So he was like, well, I spend all day with you and I kind of see that you could do stuff like that. So why don't you help me out? And that ultimately led me to go back to school, get my degree. Um, and then I sadly left Santa Ana, but it was a good thing. He gave me his blessing and <laughs> it's been great. Uh, I then went to Colton Joint Unified where I was for about a year, uh, which funny enough is Jerry's old district. And uh, I loved working there. I worked with Katie Orloff. She's the communications uh, director. 
I worked uh, under the superintendent, Dr. Frank Miranda. It was a great learning experience. Um, I really got my feet wet in communications and was like, okay, this is pretty awesome. I love it. I love what I'm doing every day. Like no day did I feel like oh, I have to go to work. It was always like excited to go to work. And then just presenting, like I had started presenting in my Santa Ana times and continu continued presenting. And um, every time I presented, there was that knock on the door, like, oh, we would love for you to come to our district. Oh, we would love this. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. And finally, I was just like, you know what? I have to go for it. I have to go for it, kind of strike while the iron is hot. And so uh, one of those places that knocked on my door was Banning Unified. Um, it's a smaller district. There's seven school sites, but nine programs total, about 5,000 students. Uh, the superintendent here is uh, Terrence Davis. Uh, he and his exec executive cabinet team are amazing. Um, so as soon as I saw this opportunity, I knew I had to go for it. And so that's where I am today. And that you're my my journey. <laughs> yeah, you I got a lot of things to ask cuz I knew okay. you were awesome, but I just wow. Okay. So, are you a one-person shop now then? I am. I'm a one-person shop. This is a brand new position for this district. Okay. So, which was also very enticing to me cuz I'm like, okay, we can kind of, you know, working with a uh, superintendent and executive cabinet really build this into something special. Um, so yeah, one-person yeah. shop. Okay. So first of all, you're a stay-at-home mom, you're dedicated to your family, you wanted to go back into education, you know, because it kind of matched your your, yeah. your kid's schedule. And then you said, send me where no one wants to go. Like, mm -hmm. that's so amazing because it's like, I also, I mean, you said it, that's where they need the most help, but it's also like where there's probably opportunity, right? Because nobody else wanted of to course. go there. Of course. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. And me, you know, I grew up in the Bronx, uh, which was where no one wanted to go at that time uh, that I was growing up. And uh, I just always think of myself as a child and who I had as my mirrors and who I had as my people I could look up to. And it was very limited outside of my family. So I was like, you know, if I'm going to go back to work and take time away from my family, then I definitely want to do it, uh, dedicating my life to serving others. Um, that way I feel good about, you know, going to work every day. Right. Um, yeah. that's awesome. So you were at Santa Ana for 10 years. You started out part-time. I'm assuming eventually you went full-time. Yeah. Within like six months, I was promoted by the principal to another position. So I was the site clerk, which helped with the health office. So that first year I caught everything known to man, the flu, you know, any, any first year teacher or educator can tell you that that first year is brutal because you catch everything, but I have the best immune system because of it. <laughs> so I was a site clerk. I was an attendance tech. Uh, I was a registrar and then I eventually became the school office manager. Okay. So yeah. Wow. And then yes, our mutual, uh, connection too with Jerry Almendaris and what you've been able to help him with, which I didn't realize really. I know he'd mentioned he joined in January, 2020, I think, but, um, what a time, mm -hmm. I mean, you only had a couple months and then social media got to be a really critical turning point. Um, I was really getting goosebumps when you were talking about, you know, his mentorship, uh, oh, yeah. to you because, uh, I had a superintendent that believed in me, Lynette, when I started this business, um, and I was at a real low point as a single divorced mom and was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And, and he saw something in me, um, that I didn't even see in myself at that time. And so I think that's really cool that he was able to, to see that in you nurture it so much that eventually yeah. you, you ended up leaving, um, but you're doing great things. I, I wonder what, um, well, anything you want to share uh, with that? Well, for me, it's funny, like, you know, you know, in the educational circle, especially in California, but I really think he's known across the country. Jerry is one of those names that like everybody knows. Um, and so I was recently at a, uh, an event for CALSA, the California um, Latino and Superintendents Association, um, Latino Superintendents and Administrators Association, excuse me. Um, and we were talking about Jerry because he was about to get an award for um, 
at the Women's Leadership Network. So he was going to get an award for being a man who, you know, encourages women for being that, that uh, supporter that he is. And I was like, the proof is in the pudding, first of all, with all the women that he has supported, because I'm just one of so many others before me, after me. Um, but also he's true to his word. Like I was just on the phone with Jerry yesterday about something special going on. Um, he checks in with his people that he mentors regularly, as busy as he is running the 11th largest district in California um, with like 40,000 students. And he still takes the time to check in and be like, um, I haven't heard from you lately. What are you doing? Are you still finishing school? Like what, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he totally is everything that people say and more. Yeah, that's so awesome. And you mentioned going back to school. So can I ask what that is? What what program are you pursuing? And, and how does that work? So I did complete my bachelor's uh, in communications with an emphasis on new media, uh, which is a relatively new uh, minor, I think that people can get in the last five, 10 years. Um, and then I'm right now uh, completing my master's in communication with an emphasis on education through GCU. Okay. So that's through TCU, you said? GCU, Grand Canyon University. Okay. GCU. And where, where'd you get your bachelor's degree? Southern New Hampshire University. So okay. both online programs, but just really great for someone who's working and also trying to, you know, complete their education. Okay. So I'd love to be able to get links to both those programs. Cause a lot of our okay. listeners are, you know, at, you know, sometimes pursuing some of that. I just had somebody, um, in Iowa was saying about applying for a job, uh, as a, you know, director or, or a, um, coordinator. And she's like, I'm not sure if I can, I don't have my degree yet. And I said, you don't need your degree first. Like you, you know, and so I would say that you're probably one that would I emphasize that as well. It's like, if you're working towards it, there's still yeah. opportunities to enter this world, right? Oh, definitely. I think, you know, the degree definitely helps. Um, and as far as like my technical knowledge, it definitely has helped me. Um, but I do think I, in that women's conference, I did hear a lot of, you know, men look at a job description and they're like, oh, I kind of fit the criteria, I'll apply. Women need to hit every bullet point before they're willing to submit the application. I think we're our own worst enemy and we should probably just submit the application because a lot of times uh, if they see that you're a go-getter, they see that you're working towards something that counts. Yeah. So, yeah. I I love it. That's really great advice. And I, <laughs> I've seen that too. And I, I agree. So now that you're at, at um, banning, how does social media fit in your role and what kind of channels are you running um, in, there in, in that district of about 5,000 students? So I'm the chief storyteller and main communicator. So I am on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we're working on our LinkedIn right now. Um, so just, yeah, all the social media. I do all the social media for the district. Uh, the superintendent is very similar, Terrence, to Jerry in that he really does value the power of social media. Uh, he sees the benefit of it. And prior to me, there was uh, like a marketing firm that was helping them with their social media. And uh, that totally works for, for some districts, but I think they needed a little bit more personalized care here. So being that I'm here, boots on the ground, that kind of helped them out. Yeah. So how do you get content knowing that you're one person, you can't be in all seven <laughs> schools, nine programs. So how are you telling that story on those Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and maybe soon you're working on your LinkedIn? Yeah. So for now, what I'm doing is uh, I'm still meeting everyone. Uh, so I'm going around to the sites, going around to the events. I started a Google folder so people can submit photos to me. They can also text me photos at any time. Um, I do at some point want to implement my brand ambassador program here uh, just so I can get some allies to help uh, provide me with content. But I already see Banning has a lot of great storytellers who... Um, you know, on a Friday night when they're at an awards ceremony are sending me like 40 pictures and I'm loving every moment of it because I can't be in all the places. So it's really meeting. And for me, the first course of action that I took was to meet 
you know, the entire leadership team. So I'm working my way through the leadership team, meeting them one-on-one, uh, explaining to them that I'm here to help them. I'm here to support them. I'm here to make their jobs easier while in turn, they're making my jobs easy, my job easier by sending me content. Um, so it's just building those relationships where people see, uh, cause you know, people sometimes think social media is bad, uh, but where they get to see the positive of social media and get to see that what we're doing is we're celebrating our students, staff and community. So, right. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned your ambassador program. So you've Im- implemented that at two different districts. You're going to be working on it on uh, your third there with Banning Unified. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, that program and how you're creating those storytellers in your schools? Yeah, so the brand ambassador program is really special to me. I attended an ENSPRA conference virtually during the pandemic. And I forget who the the person was that presented about it. And I hate that because I like to give credit where credit's due. But they talked about a brand ambassador program and they kind of um, discussed it as like a volunteer, volunteers in the district that will help with social media. They didn't go into too much detail, but it definitely ignited something in me where I was like, okay, Santa and Unified, we had like 52 school sites, you know how big it is. It's huge, 40,000 students. There's literally, you know, 20 things going on on any given day. So there was no way that me supporting the superintendent, um, even the communications team that they have, that they can cover everything that's going on. So I was like, okay, we have lots of people in this district that love social media. Why don't we start having them help us? And in turn, I will train them on how to use social media from what I'm learning. So it was kind of funny in the beginning because as I'm learning something from class, I'm like, okay, let's have a session about that because I just learned this in class. So let me, you know, pass it on. Now that I have more experience, um, I'm able to teach them a lot more for sure. But in Colton, I'm very proud that we built up a really good PD library. So I would send out the invites to the brand ambassadors. And at the end of my time at Colton, it was to anybody, anybody who wanted to come. And we talked about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I even had people come in from the district who were just pros at stuff like Wii Video or Canva, um, just so that you could build this library of PD. So people could either attend live or they could watch the recording later. But you're building these confident storytellers that know the ins and outs of social media. And I think the more confident that you are in those skills, the more likely you're, you're going to continue to do it. So it was not only helping me, helping the superintendent tell the story of the district and all the places that we couldn't be at all the time, but it's also building up our staff. We're building up a deep bench of storytellers where, you know, I would always talk to Katie, the director at Colton. I'm like, dude, Katie, if we go down, we've got storytellers across the district that got us. Like, you know, there's not going to be a day that the story doesn't get told. So that was very special to me. Yeah. And And really, I always talk about building your army of storytellers, right? And so that's exactly what you're doing. I'd love to have you, you know, I do some trainings in my membership program, I'd love to have you on and share a little bit about how you run that program, just because uh, we can even dive deeper than we are today. But, you know, were you meeting once a month, once a week? Um, How how did you work that? We were meeting once a month. And so they had like the core classes that I said, like, okay, these are your every, you know, every college you go to, there's core classes. The core classes were Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Like, I want you to learn about those three, whether you're going to have all three or you're going to have one, you just kind of need to be well-versed in what works in each platform. Because as you know, they're all very different. The audiences are very different. So my biggest thing is I don't want you to waste your time doing what works for Facebook on Twitter because it's just not going to work. You're going to get discouraged and you're going to stop doing it. So those were the core three. After that, I would send out a Google form that said, what do you want to talk about? And then they would decide as a group by whatever got the highest votes, okay, we'll talk about Canva next month because everybody wants Canva. So while I know some stuff about Canva, I know that our ed tech department in Colton knew more stuff than I did. So together we would do a presentation, show them, you know, some tips, tricks or whatever. Um, and then maybe one, one month they wanted to talk about WeVideo. Same thing. I would tap on like IT or 
if we needed to bring the vendor in, we would do that as well. Um, but it was just building up that knowledge base. And after the core three, they kind of guided what they wanted to learn, which was even, I think that was even more cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And if you have that capacity, great. I know since you've left Santa Ana this last year, I have partnered um, with yeah. Fermin and Jerry to lead some monthly ones. We actually just did Canva. So I did some oh, Canva cool. with, the, with the AI that's in there now with Canva, right? and yes. uh, the text to image. So there's all of these options that Canva is incorporating that it's just kind of magic. Uh, but if you don't keep up with it, it's like, oh my gosh, there's there's really things that can help us do our job even better. So, you know, I think, and, and maybe you feel this way too, it's not that you have to know everything to be able to bring these people together, but it's more a starting point and a discussion and then mm -hmm. sharing a few things and, the head blowing emoji, it's, it doesn't take long for somebody to get one little tip that it's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Um, I'm going to use this at my school, right? Yeah, for sure. I had a, a kinder teacher in Colton, uh, Paige Boyd. Um, she reached out to me and was like, okay, I kind of want to be an ambassador. I've only used social media personally. Like, what do you think? So I went to her classroom. We met about it. She turned into like one of the best ambassadors where like every meeting I'm like, okay, how does Paige do this? Because Paige is doing it better than I do it. So let's have Paige talk, you know, where you just, and she would always say, you know, it was just you putting that knowledge in front of me and then me taking it where I wanted to take it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And as and a now, result of it, I, she's gotten all kinds of donations for her classroom. Like all kinds of wonderful things have happened as a result of her just showing what she does every day anyway. Right. So some of these people are running personal pages. Some are running for their school. Some are yep. joint, running for their department or their club mm -hmm. or their organization or sports team, right? It's just a kind yeah. of a. Yeah. Anybody okay. who's running a district sponsored social media. So anything that has to do with, like you're saying, a team club, even your classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how you've kind of alluded to it already, but how has that brand ambassador program then impacted the storytelling that's happening? Well, it's so much more robust because, yeah. uh, you know, I can tell a great story. I pride myself on being able to do that, but that's just my view of what's going on. That's just what I get to see. And you know, those special moments that happen in a classroom when nobody else is there. Uh, by by really empowering these social these uh, brand ambassadors to utilize social media, um, you're getting to see some of those special moments. So to me, it's like I tell a great story, cool, but together we tell an amazing story because you get to see parts of the day that I will never get to see. So no matter if you're a coach, no matter if you're you know the noon duty aide, they have very special relationships with students but they can all tell different versions of the story that makes up our whole district. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's that growth abundant yeah. mentality of just knowing that there's so many and you've got to have a little trust, right? Cause oh, yeah. sometimes yeah. I can post things <laughs> where I'm like, oh my gosh, I said the wrong name or I misspelled something or, you know, sometimes sharing a story that might be controversial. So, I mean, you learn through doing, you've got to trust them. But you've obviously seen rewards that 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 definitely outweigh the risk. Oh, yeah, for sure. The rewards definitely outweigh the, the risk. And I always tell them, if you misspelled something, just know that I've misspelled it and I've sent it district wide. So <laughs> it's yes. OK. You'll be OK. You yeah. can edit on everything but Twitter, unfortunately, still. Right. So I'm like, you know, it'll be OK. It's not yeah. that big a deal. We're all human. We, we definitely are. And it builds good engagement when you misspell something. It really Everybody does. tells you, right? Everybody tells you, then you can be like, thank you. Thank you. But you know what, you know what, you know, then is they're looking. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, it's okay. Make it into yeah. a positive. <laughs> yeah. So you're still going to be um, incorporating this whole program there at Manning Unified, but you have, um, well, I'm going to edit that out because you had a podcast at Colton. We're, we're, um, let me see about 25 minutes in. Um, we've, we've just talked about so much. Is it okay if we don't talk about that podcast? Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, edit.
Okay, I'm going to start one more time. This is awesome. And, and this has been such a great conversation. As far as specific stories that you've you've been able to share or you've seen your district share, do you have one or two favorite stories that have been told? So one or two favorite stories that have been told. Um, I like, oh, let me, hold on. Let me see. What, okay. do, what kind of favorite stories do I have? Okay, I got it. <laughs> okay, I'll just start over again. Okay. So, so over the years, Lynette, you've been able to tell a lot of amazing stories. Is there one or two that kind of stand out as ones that you're really proud of or that had amazing reach or just the, the story itself was so cool to share? One of the more special stories that I that I shared recently, and it wasn't even one that got the most reach or or anything. Um, it definitely did get a, a fair amount of reach. Was about our veterinary pathway at Colton Joint Unified. That was pretty special because it's a pathway. It's a CTE pathway that students can go into if they want to be in veterinary medicine. It's on their campus. Um, so they can actually, you know, people from the community bring in their pets, they can groom them, they give them their vaccines. And I just kind of did a day in the life of that, of the vet pathway. And it was like a twofold gift. One, you know, I think it's a hidden gem in that district that a lot of people don't talk about. So I was really excited to get the opportunity to talk about. Two, the passion that the students had talking about it. Um, and they actually have ambassadors for that program now that are going to be uh, discussing that program a whole lot more, but they do such a great job, you know, touring people around and talking about things like that. So that, that pathway was really special to me amongst all the other pathways, but that pathway was very special to me because it's like one of those little known gems where you're like, we've had this all this time. Why doesn't anybody say anything? So right. I thought that was a pretty cool story because the community received it well as well. Um, they were very, they were like, wait, Colton has that? Or like, oh yeah, Colton does have that. You know, so-and-so went through it. So comment wise, like that engagement was great. Yeah. I love that. So what hidden yeah. gems listeners do you have at your district that people either may have forgotten about, or it deserves to be highlighted a little more. Like you said, it's not only the story that's told and that, Hey, we have this program, but then people can see and hear and feel the passion from your students that get to be part of it. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. There's hidden gems in every district. Um, I think I may have found the hidden gem here in Banning, but I'm not going to say yet. <laughs> um, there's been a few of them that I've found, so I'm really excited. But um, there's hidden gems everywhere where people are just doing the work. Uh, students are just doing the work and not talking about it. So just, you know, build those relationships so you can start to uncover those. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, are you going to be at the Ensper conference this year? I'm hoping to. I'm trying to see if it works out with our uh, leadership symposium date. Okay. It's that but, tricky time of year. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to meet you and give you a hug in person. <laughs> so, um, and, and now everybody wants to meet you. So as, <laughs> as we kind of close our, our time together today, what would you say is your best social media tip? My best social media tip is don't overthink the caption. I think a lot of times people overthink the caption and think that they have to be super wordy. Um, we were talking about AI earlier. If you feel like you just absolutely can't figure out what to say, I love chat GPT. When I have writer's block, it gets me started. I'm not copy pasting what chat GPT says, but it definitely puts me on the, oh, okay, yeah, I can say it that way instead. But don't let that caption stop you from posting that photo. The most basic caption gets it done because people are looking at the photo. That is awesome advice. So what is the best way for our listeners to stay connected to you, Lynette? So on Instagram, I am Lynette White Social. On Twitter, I'm Lynette W Social. Um, a lot of people reach out to me and yeah, I would love to connect. Awesome. We'll make sure to link those in the show notes. Everybody um, definitely check out what she's sharing for Banning Unified. Um, 
we're going to continue to cheer you on and watch your career continue to unfold. You're doing amazing things. And uh, I'm just so blessed to, to really be connected with, with you, Lynette. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I do have something really exciting that I want to share. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Tell me. I know I, I alluded to, to it earlier when uh, I was talking about Jerry and sharing some exciting news. So I just found out yesterday that um, a book that I'm, <laughs> that I've been writing is going to be published. That's so yeah. Awesome. So so what, tell me about it. it. Okay. So I'm co-writing the book with Dr. Renee Bryant. She's the director of plural lingual students, I think, in Anaheim Union High School District, very big district. Um, and we're going to be co-writing a book about uh, branding for educators, how important their own brand is in, in conjunction with their site and their organization. So we're really excited to have gotten that news. And by the time this podcast come out comes out, it'll be officially done and signed. But we got a, a great offer yesterday, and I'm super excited. That is incredible. So when it becomes available, you let me know. So I will. I can, I can uh, do that. I, just uh, having my book released, it's such a thrill. Um, I know. Be, I saw because that. we proud of you. Yeah, we just want to help people, right? And so to yeah. have a resource out there like that is going to be amazing. So thank you for leaning into your gifts and to just see that, you know, you can just tell your your desire to serve and to help others continues to, to just make such an impact. So I am so proud Thank of you. you. Likewise, same to you. Same to you. You can't be in a room with Andrea, even virtually without being inspired. <laughs> we, we kind of have a little bit of a passion for what we do, which is awesome. Well, for thank sure. you, Lynette. Definitely connect with Lynette and see what she's doing. Um, she is just a great person that's doing a lot for schools everywhere, but definitely, um, obviously, schools in California. And we'll be back next week with another fabulous guest. So until then, don't overthink your captions and just tell those stories. Right, Lynette? Definitely. Tell them. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.